Thank you so much. Wembley Arena, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for coming down to the show and giving me this opportunity to play this incredible building. Thank you so much. Wow. And, uh, and the reason you are lit up, and you look fucking great, by the way. You're all fucking like that. Oh, no, I'll put the old clobber on tonight, go and see that monkey boy. You look great. The reason you're lit is they're shooting this for video, which is, uh, sh I'm shitting my pants, because now I've got to remember everything. But, uh, and so I'm honoured, thank you very much. I, I've come up to London yesterday and stuff. I'm staying in a very nice hotel. I actually spent f four days in my hotel room because I kind of closed the door and there's this sign saying, do not disturb, I went, fuck, I can't get out. <laughs> I opened the wardrobe, there's like a pillow and a blanket. It's the worst night's sleep I've ever fucking had, I'll tell you. <laughs> and the Corby trouser press, fuck, don't know your legs. I'm like. <laughs> and the mini bar, I was thrown out of there for fighting. That was a nightmare. And do you know what? In the hotel rooms now, it's all porn. You walk in, there's like a card on top of the TV. Watch the porn, watch the porn. Right next to it, box of tissues. You go, fuck, I've got to. <laughs> it's there, it's there, you know. No, 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 because you've got one minute before it goes on your bill. You're like, come on! <laughs> I'm sorry, there's people leaving going, oh, no, I must leave right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, fucks. I don't get porn. I mean, what's the story? There's always like two people making love and then suddenly the fucking plumber walks in. They go, oh, join in. <laughs> They're all American films that would never happen here. Well, the plumber wouldn't turn up, let's face it. I mean, <laughs> sorry I'm late, M25. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, I'm so nervous, I'm sort of standing back there and as I walk up the stairs, some guy goes, break a leg. So I do, fucking is, what is he? What, what does that mean? That would be great. That'd be great if I came down with a broken leg going, great to be here! Break her leg. I mean, I've always been superstitious. I would never walk on the gaps in the pavement when I was a kid. It took me two weeks to get off the end of our drive because we had fucking crazy paving. I was like... <laughs> Nightmare. But uh, so I never let a black cat cross your path. I feel sorry for people that own black cats. They can never fucking relax. Here he comes, here he comes! <laughs> break a leg. You know, break a leg. That's like saying, mind your head. People only say, mind your head after you've bashed it. You go, oh. They go, oh, mind your head. <laughs> no, fucking mind yours, you twat. You know, I try to relax. I was looking around London today and they got relaxation tapes in the shops, you know? Whale music. Listen to the whale music. I'm thinking to myself, these whales have got all these albums in the shops. You never see them on tour doing interviews, though, do you? Next album's gonna be huge. <laughs> it's like at home, we have a goldfish. Never sleeps. You go, ah, sleep! You go, I can't! I got no fucking eyelids! I'M NAKED! <laughs> it's like today was in Curry's, you know the big department store, the electrical store, it was incredible. They always do the same thing, this is what you want, Lee, this is what you want, DVD, right? DVD, video, combo. <laughs> no, rent them, tape them, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> And they always say the same thing. No, I've actually got one of these myself, actually. <laughs> Where do these people live? A fucking warehouse. They've always got one there. And I like it when you're paying for it. They go, oh, no, it's never let you down. It's bulletproof, bombproof. Do you want the extended warranty? <laughs> and we went, to, uh, we went to a pasta restaurant today. And they don't actually trust you to sit down. You kind of go in and they get the seat and they sit you down. They go, there you go. And you go, oh, th thanks, thanks. No, because I wouldn't have known how that fucking works, now. <laughs> I would have had me dinner way away from the table. <laughs> and the pepper, have you seen the size of it? You <laughs> pepper! It's like they've nicked a chair leg. You <laughs> pepper! That's what the police should use instead of pepper spray. You're much further away. Get back, get fucking back. And they have a smoking section right next to a non-smoking section. Oh, how does the smoke now? <laughs> the smoke goes like that. Oh, oh no, we're not allowed. <laughs> I 
fucking mad. Where else did we go? I went to the gas showroom. They got no gas in there. Go in the gas showroom. All they got is cookers. Go in there and go, show me some gas. I'm interested. <laughs> and they're always saying gas is so good. Much better than electric. You go in there and go, your lights. What sort of gas do they run on then? Because the electricity companies are always doing that. They're always advertising on the TV. Electric's great. Buy electric. We've already got it. We're already piped up. We wouldn't be able to wash your avo if we didn't have it. We'd be sat in the fucking dark. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know, Faraday invented electricity before the light bulb. How did he know what it did? You know, his wife walked in and she went, What's it, Joe? He went, What's this? Give us a cat's bollocks. Watch. <laughs> You know, as soon as he joined those two little wires up, an estimated bill fell onto his mat. Because <laughs> I never get that. What is an estimated bill? I'll tell you what it is. They're making it up. When we pay, we should estimate. I estimate, oh, you fuck all. <laughs> Why not? You know? And that's the best one. It doesn't matter what you say. All blokes are in charge of the remote control in the house. It's incredible. They stand in the middle of the lounge and they point at the TV and go, ah, shit, shit, shit. <laughs> shit, 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 shit. It's all fucking shit. <laughs> then he landed to his wife and go, you find something, love. <laughs> Isn't it strange when somebody else is going through the channels, it all looks more fucking interesting. <laughs> go back, I missed that one. <laughs> Why do we let the batteries get that low in the remote? We leave it forever. We like to let them get right down to the fucking hill, you know? You'll stand in front of the TV going, come on! <laughs> King, come on! <laughs> and you bang it. It's like... <laughs> Why are you banging it? You wouldn't let your car get on the red and then fucking bang it. <laughs> and you get right up to the TV, go, come on, you fucking... You could switch it on from here. <laughs> I like it when your wife goes like that. Let's switch it off, eh, and have a chat. Fucking give us it here, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> and you watch TV always. When you watch TV, the adverts always come on much louder than the programs. Why is that? I think they know. That's when we get up to make a cup of tea, they're shouting after us. Oi! <laughs> and it's weird, it's like... <laughs> it's the weirdest fucking thing. Oh, I'm knackered, yeah? I slept really well last night as well. I slept like a baby last night. I pissed the bed four times. <laughs> Woke up crying five. <laughs> I don't know, you know when you lift your head off the pillow, it's like the early morning, you lift your head off the pillow, that alarm clock's there and they put that fucking snooze button on top, you're gonna use it, you know? You kind of wake up and go, oh, fuck it. <laughs> you can't help it, it's there, you're gonna use it, that extra 15 minutes, you say to yourself, I've had a long sleep, fuck it, I deserve a nap. <laughs> Why do they give us that option? They know we're gonna use it, you wouldn't have one on your fire alarm, would you? Somebody runs up to you, there's a fire, is it? I'll tell you what, fuck it. <laughs> we'll, we'll have an extra 15, we'll burn a bit, we'll burn a bit. <laughs> Do you ever wake up before the alarm goes off? That's the best one, you kind of look at the clock and go, no, I'm not moving. <laughs> until you go off. <laughs> like... <laughs> Because sleep, you know, sleep is bad for you. How many times have you gone up the pub on a Friday or a Saturday night? You know, you come home, you feel great, you go to bed, you wake up in the morning, you feel like shit. <laughs> it was a sleep, little dinky. <laughs> I felt great about two o'clock last night. <laughs> I, like, I love these people that go like, I can't sleep, I'm like overtired. What the fuck's that? <laughs> It's like us going, I'm over awake! <laughs> you know, it's like, 
And we're all coming at the house today. Me, my wife, and my, uh, my, my daughter and stuff. And you know, you leave it all day. In the last five minutes, you're going out the door. Everything is 90 miles an hour. We're like, come on, out the fucking door. My wife turns to me and she goes, keys. I go, oh, keys, keys. I go back in the house. You ever do that thing where you walk in a room and you forget why the fuck you walked in there? And then you ask yourself, why did I walk in this room? Why are you asking you? You don't fucking know. <laughs> you know. And if you already know the answer, why don't you interrupt yourself? I know what you're going to say. <laughs> I get the keys. I'm on my way out the door. My wife goes, ah, strange, isn't it? They're always in the last place you look. Well, yes. I wouldn't look, find them, and keep fucking looking. <laughs> Oh, there they are, but fuck it, hey! <laughs> I just like wasting hours, just keep looking! <laughs> we go outside, we're sitting in the car, looking up at the house, and my wife has left the landing light on. What's that for? Burglars. <laughs> yeah, burglars would walk up to our house and go, oh no, they're all gathered on the landing. <laughs> on the landing going, ah, fucking shut up, shut up. <laughs> so I go in, I go in, I switch a lamp on. I go, yes, yeah, I switch a lamp on, that'll fool them, yeah. Yeah, no, too obvious. No, I switch the lamp off. We're all waiting for him in the dark. There. No, that's no good. I mean, it really does look like we're out. I'll tell you what I do. I put the lamp on, I put it in the cupboard, I close the cupboard, I know it's on, but he fucking don't, does he? <laughs> We come up to Wembley, and I'll tell you, I, I, it's unbelievable. You know, I'm sorry if I look an idiot, I'm really sorry. I looked in the mirror as I just walked on just now. Monkey boy. <laughs> really, you can never see the back in a mirror, that's what I hate. You know, what I do is I turn around really quickly, I go like, ah. <laughs> Nearly got it. It's like your wife's makeup mirror, have you had a go on that? It's like one side is normal, you turn it over and you go, oh, look at the size of my head. <laughs> got fucking water on the brain. I don't know, I'm sorry. We have, we've been traveling everywhere. Went to uh, 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 Torquay, the English Riviera, they call it. I don't fucking think so. <laughs> you kind of drive in, it's got signs with palm trees on and everything. You should have a look at the palm trees when you get there. They're about that big. They've got their roots in hot water and a fucking electric blanket. They're like, ah. <laughs> fucking crazy. <laughs> we live in a cold country. We never realise that. Go to any kind of seaside town in Britain. Have a look at the seagulls. The great British seagull, they're fucking huge. They are, they're like, ah, what you fucking look at you. They got their feathers rolled up, fucking tattoos. There's always one with a gammy leg, you know? I went to see my mum and dad as well. Wow, they smoke unbelievable amounts of cigarettes. You knock on the door, they open the door, all this smoke goes It's like, tonight, Matthew, I'm gonna be. <laughs> you go in, they got like fog horns and everything. It's like, ah. <laughs> Hang on to this rope, otherwise we lose you. Budgie's dead in the cage, fucking anthrax mask, you know? <laughs> They're great people, they really are my parents. I have an older brother as well, who's a fantastic bloke. When we were kids, if we did anything wrong, my dad had this huge belt, he'd get out the cupboard, and we'd hit the shit out of him with it, it was great. <laughs> and all blokes know, you know you get to that age, you start getting the same size as your dad, and he can't hit you no more. Like 14, 15, he'd go like that, go to your room, and you go, <sighs> Things are going to change you, reindeer. <laughs> you know, it didn't hit me, but it took a team of surgeons to remove that fag from my arse. <laughs> he bought me a train set once. I opened it up, it was an empty box. He said, it's a train strike, fuck off. 
I was in America about three months ago, and, um, and I had to fly back, because I'm not fucking swimming, sob that. <laughs> but somebody said to me, if you're going to get on one of those long haul flights, what you have to do is you have to take some sleeping pills. You know, you can take a, have a kip on the plane, when you get off the other side, you'll be all refreshed. I went, that's a great idea. So I'm at the airport, they called my flight, I took about, what, fucking 19? <laughs> And I ran to the gate. When I got to the gate, the woman went, sorry, cancelled. I went, you were joking. <laughs> but she said, stay alert. Because one will be along any minute. <laughs> Because in America, they are, they're petrified since September the 11th, you know, about security and stuff. Because security, as we know, is bad. You go to any British airport and you just kind of walk up to the check-in thing and there's that woman behind the check-in desk who's wearing way too much fucking makeup for me. <laughs> they're like the women at the cosmetic counters, you know, in the department stores. Have you seen them? They've got like, orange faces and white coats. It's like you've been fucking tangoed, love. <laughs> you know? Some people love retail shopping. Personally, I hate it. I do. I went to buy some sunglasses the other day and it's impossible. You go into Boots or whatever and there's like a sunglass rack and they've nicked a mirror off of a fucking Tonka toy or something, I don't know. So you can't see anything anyway. You put the glasses on and they put the tassel right in the fucking middle. <laughs> then they put that sticky patch over one lens. Thanks, now I can see fuck all! <laughs> So I wear glasses, and anyone that wears glasses, you will know. You've got to have your eyes tested. They sit you in this seat. They bring this huge apparatus down on top of your head. You go, fuck, I'm not wearing these. <laughs> you got something a bit more fashionable, you know. <laughs> and you can't try new glasses on, because you have to take your glasses off to try new ones on. No, you can't see. <laughs> they go, what do you think? You go, I don't know. I can't fucking see any my glasses. So I'm at the check-in thing, you know, and I kind of go through, go through the check-in thing. And there's this woman, you're kind of face, the security is so bad at the check-in thing, you're kind of there, and she goes like that. This woman goes, I'm just going to ask you some security questions, is that okay? And you think, well, she's on the ball. She's obviously going to tie me to a chair, you know, slap me around a bit, shine a light in my eyes or something. She goes like that, did you pack your bag? Yourself. <laughs> oh, fucking well done. I'm a terrorist. How did you just like crack me like that? <laughs> this is the one I love. I love this one because they go, Have you left your bag unattended at any time? Well, it's been in the fucking loft for six months. I mean, well, you know what I mean? <laughs> How long do I have to fucking keep it? Because <laughs> there's these signs all around the airport. It says any left items will be taken away by the police and destroyed. So I took me old fridge in. I thought, fuck it, I'll get rid of that. <laughs> you can't get rid of them because of the gases, you know. So you get your case and you put it on this kind of conveyor. She presses a button, poof, off goes your case. Your case goes, ah, where am I going? I don't like this. Don't leave me, please. <laughs> and it's gone, and you don't see it until you get to the other end, you know? And it kind of comes out of that flappy door at the back, which is great. It kind of goes <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Where the fuck have you been? <laughs> you know, it's like... <laughs> that was a nightmare! It's got like a dent in here like that. Look at that! Because I love that flappy door. You know that kind of flappy door it comes through? It's fantastic at the back. Because it's like, it's like that door your mum used to have as a kid. Do you remember that? What well, you must do, it's like, it was like multicoloured strips of plastic. <laughs> you go, what's that? It's a door. Fuck off. <laughs> Burglars would walk up to it with a crowbar and go like, oh no, I never cracked that. <laughs> that wasn't a door. 
every time you walk through it, you look like a sex shop owner. You know, you kind of... Do you want to buy some videos? It wasn't a proper door. You still had it on your head when you got to the fucking lounge. It was... You know... It's like these people that have a bit of a country door. You know, they have that barn door. What's that? That's a kind of, I don't fucking know door. You open the top bit, you look like a horse. You open the bottom bit, you look like you're in the bog. Got any toilet paper? <laughs> so I go through the check-in, I goes down to the thing, you know, I get, I get gets on the plane, I cannot believe my luck when I get on the plane, I swear. I get like an exit seat, and the leg room you get with an exit seat is incredible. You like that? Look at the fucking leg room I got here. I'm looking back at economy going, look at that! <laughs> Until the stewardess takes you for the survival kind of routine. She goes, if there's a fire, or we go down, the exits are here, here, and here. And they point at you, me? What have I got to do with an accident? <laughs> no, because if you get an exit seat, now you have a certain responsibility. Because you've got to know how that fucking door opens. Because in a crisis, everyone's going to come running at you to get out the door. All the lights on the floor lead to B15. That's my seat. Fuck, I only want to be a legroom. I thought I was going to be part of the fucking team. <laughs> you know? Because they always say that. They always say, follow these lights on the floor. Yeah, 300 people in a blind panic looking for fucking lights. <laughs> Especially British people. They're like, ah, out of the way, out of the way. There was one here earlier. <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> It's like fire extinguishers. They always make the instructions so bloody complicated. Somebody will run up to you and go, there's a fire! Is it? Okay. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> Shake it, I think. <laughs> and on takeoff, you're banging down the runway and the stewardess is sitting the other way, facing us. Why is she facing us? Safer. Then I want to fucking face that way. <laughs> And do you know what? It doesn't matter, because if we hit anything, she's going to get a face full of me anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's like that advert, Julie knew her killer. That's me! Because <laughs> the pilot is the most important thing on a plane. You know when he comes over that tano and he goes, Morning, everyone. Don't worry, I'll get you there safely. And you think, oh, the posh twat will. Because they got that accent, you know, it's very calming, that posh accent. You have to have the right accent to be an airplane pilot. You can't have the wrong accent, it's a job description. You can't come over the tannoy and go, Hello! <laughs> have you looked down yet? <laughs> oh, I've shit my pants! <laughs> it would scare us. You, well, no, we've come to expect that nowadays, a bit of professionalism, you know? Like a copper knocks on your door to give you some bad news. He can't go, oh, love. Oh. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I'll hold it back, I'll hold it back. <laughs> Do you have a dog? <laughs> Fuck, I'm so sorry, it's just seen its paws sticking out the sides of the wheels. <laughs> it's as flat as a card. <laughs> Fuck it, come and have a look for yourself. <laughs> it would freak us out, you know. And why do you want to fart so much on a plane? <laughs> what is that? Why are they feeding us balloons? Was it cabin pressure? What is it? You say to yourself, you're sat in your seat and you say, can I let a sly one go into the sponge? <laughs> no, because it has that kind of delayed reaction. It stays around in the sponge, you know? And the passengers that get on the plane after you, they get it. Somebody will sit in your seat and go, <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, now that's strange. Not because I didn't feel anything. 
and yet my eyebrows are falling from my face. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> What? You know, that, that, that's why I feel sorry for that guy who has to open the door when you get to the gate at the other end. You know, when you get to the other airport. No, because he has to open that fucking door. He's on the outside of the plane. He kind of guides that ramp in like... <laughs> it latches onto the plane. He undoes the door. <laughs> you know, 3,000 accumulated farts fucking straight at him. That's why you will see two people in fluorescent jackets and a wheelchair. It's for him. <laughs> He's like that. <laughs> we'll take him from here, love. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and the toilet on a plane, it's got some suck on it, hasn't it? Does it really need to suck that hard? It's a button about that big. You press it, it's like. <laughs> hair in the cabin goes oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you know you know what's fascinated me is why they never have a window in a playing bog who's gonna see you at 35,000 fucking f <laughs> some bloke on the outside of the plane going you're right You know. <laughs> then you have to get off the plane, which I love, you know, because it's like we're British and we should be proud of that. Because they always say the same thing, the stewardesses, please remain in your seats until we reach the terminal. Yeah, fuck off. <laughs> when do we ever do that? As soon as the wheels touch the floor, we're underneath the luggage thing like that. <laughs> where's me case? Where's me fucking... <laughs> Oops, you're right, mate. Sorry about that. <laughs> we just want to get off the plane. <laughs> you know, it's when we go to a foreign country, we go on Spain or so and so on holiday, and they always have to uh, fill in that customs form, and it says, it says, are you bringing any plant life or animal life into the country? What, they wouldn't notice you with a cow under your arm going through fucking customs? <laughs> stay still, stay still! Meh. Shut up, fucking shut up! It's a Spanish donkey! <laughs> you know, I hate travelling and I hate holidays. You know, you know I, my wife was looking at holiday brochures the other day. I don't want to go on fucking holiday. There's always pictures of, like, a bloke in the pool on a lilo with a fucking drink. You ever tried to do that on holiday? You, got, you stand by the edge of the pool with drink in hand and you go, drink, pull, lie low, go! Fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> Love, hold me, pine! <laughs> I played water polo the other week and my horse drowned. That was a nightmare. <laughs> I feel sorry for horses, you know, because they wear them shoes and they can't take them off at the end of the day if they aren't like us. They kind of get in and go, oh, my feet, oh, oh, some fuckers nailed them on! <laughs> You know, because <laughs> we humiliate horses. You always see them on the motorway in those horse boxes. They have to show their ass the whole fucking journey. <laughs> Does my ass look big in this box? <laughs> you know? But they sweat. Horses, have a look at them at the end of a race. The steam coming off of them. You know, that's why the jockeys are so small. They've shrunk. <laughs> They're not halfway around. They went, go, go, go. <laughs> We all have to 
keep fit. This is what we're told. And we don't. We look great. You look fucking brilliant, you lot. We don't have to keep fit. You have these adverts beamed in from America. And there'd be a fantastic looking woman on a piece of apparatus going, this is great. You should buy this apparatus. <laughs> and they're always smiling. You know, when do we ever smile down the gym? We're like, ah, <laughs> no. You can't smile in the gym. Not in fucking London, you can't. <sighs> Somebody walk up to you and go, you laughing at me on that machine over there. Kick your bleeding teethy. <laughs> we don't have to do anything now. They have these pads, electro pads they are. You just stick them on your stomach, switch it on, you sit there and jerk like that. <laughs> What's that? That's not a sport. You never see that in the Olympics. You ready? Go! <laughs> you know, it's like, because I'm, what you see with me is what you get, basically. I'm not a sports person. You know, I'm an idiot. And when I was at school, I, I was an idiot. You know, it's sport. Like, the, the, on sports day, like, you know the egg and spoon race? I it took so long, I ended up running with a chicken. It was like... <laughs> People used to pick on me in PE, like the towel. Do you remember the towel? It was always the first one. You go, what are you doing with that? You go, you'll find there. We used to do stuff like that. We were nuts, like lick a battery. What the fuck was that? <laughs> Just go like, ah, John, John, watch. <laughs> you know, it was like, fuck, you just had a stroke. Oh no. <laughs> do it again. I was gonna. All the stuff they made us do, like swim in your pajamas. What the hell point was that? Who are you going to save at night? You're in bed. If somebody woke you up and went, someone's drowning. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I was up in love. You know, this is why we never produce any great sportsmen and women. The Winter Olympics, we won none, nothing at all. You know, the reason for that is we never get any really good snow. We get a good slush, but not a really good snow. Not like the Europeans, they can practice, you know? We should have more sports that are congenial to the British in the winter, like, that we're good at, like the moaning bus queue. We're fucking good at that. <laughs> yeah, they go like, <laughs> go! Fucking bastards, they never bleed on you. Because we're a great nation of moaners. We're great at it. Even if we won a gold, we'd moan. We'd go, ah, but it ain't real. Fuck it. <laughs> People are using steroids and stuff, you know? You know the solution to that? Let everyone use it. It'd be great. All the events would change. It'd be like the hop, skip, and where the fuck did he go? <laughs> oh. Great. Football season started, you know? I love football, because I, most of all, I love the fans, because they're so passionate, you know? They stand on the terraces and they shout stuff like, Go on! What the fuck advice is that to your team? <laughs> you never see the manager at half-time going, Huddle up, huddle up, huddle up! Go on! <laughs> now remember that. Because <laughs> the fans, they always know best. They stand on the terraces and they go, Go round him! Fuck, I could do that and be bleeding eyes oh, shut! Why are we spending fortunes on these foreign managers when we could get this guy? He seems to know it all. They should stop the match halfway through and go, shh, shh, sh no, just you. <laughs> well, I thought you could go round him. <laughs> Tap it in the net, you know, I don't know. And the fans always do stuff in unison. They'll all be in unison. The ball had just missed the net and they'll all go, ah, oh, together. That would freak me out. I'd be like, ah, fuck, we all just said the same thing. <laughs> Jinx, make a wish. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> This is how passionate the fans are in football. It's the only sport in the world where all the fans can wear exactly the same as the players on the pitch. No other sport can you do that. You know, like uh, swimming. Everyone in Speedo's going like, go on, son! <laughs> Swim your eye right out, sunshine! <laughs> yeah. 
That's a sport I don't get, swimming. What's that? Freestyle? What the fuck's that? Do you know what it is? Do what you like. All right, I'll bring a speedboat. There you go. <laughs> it's like me and my family, we never do anything, you know? And as a day out, I thought we'd go to uh, the Formula One racing. It's a day out, I thought, fuck it, you know? So there's me, my wife and my daughter. We was all stood there, 50 quid to get in, right? We stood there and a car went, <laughs> Quit this. <laughs> Half an hour later. <laughs> Go on, Sam. This crap. But um, they, they indicate. They always tell me that they have to have a break or something. They go, "There's a, there's a break." He goes, ah, "There's a break." People gonna have a beer and a crafty fag or something, I don't know. What is a crafty fag? 20 crafty fags, please, mate. <laughs> don't know what that is, you know. Go to the toilet. I hate going to a public toilet. Because every time I go in there, that automatic air freshener always goes off when I'm in there. It's like, <laughs> it's like you stink. It's like, oh. <laughs> I always think someone's trying to contact me from one of the cubicles, you know. I'm like that, what's the matter? <laughs> Are you stuck? <laughs> and in the gents toilet, there's always a low pan, you know, it's for kids, this. There's always a pube in it, you go, fucking they're growing up quick now. <laughs> Where do you go to far? I've never heard a woman far. I haven't, you know, men, we spent our youth laughing about it. We were like 15, 16, we're like, John, John, John. <laughs> That's vintage, vintage. <laughs> That's what we did, you know. <laughs> Some of the stuff you see on the roads, you know, like, like uh, today, caravans on the M25. Who the fuck are these people? <laughs> people with caravans on the back, you'll see their head just po poking above the steering wheel, like, ah, lovely, lovely, gone away for the weekend, lovely, lovely. They got more mirrors than the Hubble fucking spacecraft, you know? <laughs> I like to see all the road, thank you very much. <laughs> Have a chat to a caravaner, they're hilarious. They say stuff like, oh, the camp's lovely. It's got all the amenities. Running hot water, electrical points, stay in a fucking hotel then! <laughs> you know what I mean? Have you ever stood outside of a caravan in the morning and heard them making a cup of tea? Fuck, it's great. They go, would you like a cup of tea, dear? <laughs> <laughs> Having a shit? <laughs> <laughs> That's not on holiday, is it? I saw a caravan today parked up by the roadside and they sat outside it with one of those fold-out tables. Sat by the roadside drinking fucking tea. What are you fucking doing? Having a cup of tea, watching the cars go by, thank you very much. <laughs> it's not on holiday, is it? Some of the things you see, I saw a bloke today on the motorway just holding a number plate. Have you seen him? I went, fuck, that's a bad accident, isn't it? That? <laughs> Either that or somebody nicked his car and he went, come back! <laughs> It's terrifying on the roads. You'll see the big tanker, you'll always see them on the motorway. Huge tanker, and on the back it's got that red warning sign, and it says, highly inflammable, chemical waste, and you think, oh, that's on the road. They must have a genius driving there. You get up, have a look in the cab, he's one step away from a fucking amoeba. He's like that. <laughs> he's got a fag on. <laughs> Fuck it. It's terrifying. Some of the things you see, this bloke I saw in the services car park yesterday, and you'll see him in any car park, in the supermarket car park, he's great. He walks across the car park and he's got one of those fobs and he opens his car before he actually gets there. He goes like, ah. <laughs> I don't know if you saw what I just did there. <laughs> but, I, <laughs> but 
when I actually opened my car door before I physically actually got there. <laughs> to what? <laughs> Come on, he's gonna go to his car just like all of us and open the door and get in. You wouldn't get out of your car before you arrive, would you? 60 miles an hour, you got out. Ah! I don't know if you saw what I just did then. <laughs> I actually got out of my car before I physically fucking arrived. I love these people that put their kind of driver's seat up against their steering wheel when they lock the car. Oh, yeah. That would fool the most sophisticated criminal, that one. You know, because they, they get a coat hanger, open the door, and they go like, oh, no! He's put his seat up against his steering wheel. <laughs> Fuck it, I'll squeeze in, I'll squeeze in. <laughs> Even your car don't like going backwards. You put your car in reverse and start going backwards. It don't have sound worried. It'll go like that. It don't like it. Because when you slow down, your car will start to settle down. You listen to it, it's like, uh, uh, fun, fun, fun. <laughs> Big trucks, they're even more nervous. Have a listen to them, they're like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> They don't like it. It's like, <laughs> The way we treat old people in this country is disgusting. It really is. You'll see the coach pull up into the services and the big coach driver get off and he go, right, you lot, food, five minutes, fuck off. <laughs> You'll see them all go across the tarmac like that. Okay. <laughs> By the time they've made it to the food counter, he's like, no time, back on the fucking bus. <laughs> Not fair. Here, haven't old people got such big ears? <laughs> Why is that? The older they get, they shrink, their fucking ears grow. <laughs> and they hear less. <laughs> it's true, you'll always see that little old woman mumbling to herself up the ice tree like, oh, no, no. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? She can hear her, but she can't fucking hear us. You never see her shouting at herself, going, What are you saying? I don't know, can you? I can't fucking hear you! <laughs> and they wilt. All old people wilt to like that when they get to a certain age. What's that? What happens? You get to 65, you get a bus pass and a fucking lead hat. It's not right. It's like, I'll go, and, I'll go and see my nan. I'll go and see my nan. She's a lovely lady, you know? And she'll bring in some tea, and she'll go like that. Tea! <laughs> oh, you've drunk it. I'll make some more. <laughs> you take her up the old people's home, and they sit them in rows of seats, you know? And they're all asleep. As soon as they whack up some music, they all wake up and go, Oh, Mama Kylie's dog. <laughs> Because you know, old people can't fall asleep in the chair in peace. Oh no. As soon as they nod off in the chair, you go, Nan, Nan! They go, what, what? Oh, sorry, we thought you'd just die. <laughs> I can't. It's not fair. You'll always see that little old woman in the supermarket up at the cashier complaining that she's been overcharged for something. It's not her fault. It's her false teeth. They sound just like the scanner. She go out, ick, 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 ick. <laughs> Excuse me, love. <laughs> Is your superbike sure here, please? <laughs> it's just that I bought some sesame seed soup. <laughs> it's not right. You know, I think I talk about old people because I worry. I don't want to get old. Who wants to get old? I said to my wife, if I ever get like that, you know, mumbling to myself and shitting me pants, shoot me. She went, fucking run, monkey boy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> then they put you in a coffin. They pad the coffin. What's that all about? They're going to fire you from a fucking cannon? What's that? 
But I got lost. I got lost coming into Wembley. Who fucking don't? God, the one-way system's here. Even the signs around Wembley go, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> you, know and you, you know when you ask, I don't know if anyone asks, you always get, why is it you always get the fucking village idiot? Why is that? I don't know where I am myself! <laughs> then it suddenly comes to him, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You go day and there, over the bridge, I ain't there anymore, but fuck it, take a run up. <laughs> Pass me mum and dad's house. <laughs> getting lost is the worst thing in the world, especially if you're with your wife. That's the nightmare. You know, if you get lost with your wife, you know it's going to turn into a nightmare. You know, because you know when you hand your wife the map, you think she's going to turn into the Lombard rally. You know, put a helmet on some goggles and go like that. Go, go, left, right, straight ahead. But they don't. You hand your wife the map in the car and she goes, out, Where are we now? That's why I give you the fucking map! Where are you? What? You got us lost! Christopher fucking Columbus! You fucking... <laughs> this is why they never had married flight teams on planes. It would never work. You'd be sat on a plane over the tunnel and go, ding dong, does anyone here know the way to Malaga? Because he don't know where the fuck he is at the minute. Guess what? He won't radio and ask. Because men never ask. Oh no, they get a feeling. I've got a feeling, love. I've got a feeling. It's up here. <laughs> Call it pigeon's instinct. <laughs> men never ask. You've seen sperm in the womb, haven't you? They're like, no, I won't ask. It's up here, definitely. <laughs> it's like when you break down. All oh, women know it's a technical thing, it's an engine. You need the right advice. But blokes go like, oh, no, 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 love. Let me have a look. <laughs> Pop the bonnet, love. Let me have a look. And that's what they do. Blokes, they lift the bonnet and they fucking look at the engine. They go like, <laughs> yeah, it's fucked. Why are they open to do so that they're open to see the solution when they just fucking stare at the engine? They go, ah, it was an octopus. <laughs> Star up, love. <laughs> Who'd have thought? <laughs> that's all part of being a man, getting involved, fixing stuff. That's, that's us, we're men. It's like anything goes wrong at home, we love to get involved. Your wife will say to you, something's wrong with the microwave. You go, oh, fucking is it? <laughs> Let me have a look. Tart, so no fuck all. <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> Right, the, the troubleshooting section. Have you thought about looking in there? I don't think you fucking have, have you? <laughs> number, <laughs> number one, is the appliance plugged in? What twat wouldn't plug the... F oh, fuck. <laughs> Love getting involved. You've seen a bloke buying a car, they're great. They look the whole car over, and the deciding factor for him, you kick the wheel. I'll take it. <laughs> What's that? That's a full fucking MOT, that is. Advertisers know how we tick. Men, you always see a car magazine, on the front of that is a car, on top of that is a woman in a swimsuit. And do you know what men think? They go, <gasps> if I buy that car. I reckon I'll get myself the woman. <laughs> what if you did get the woman? Now it's your wife. Would you let your wife do that? Get off the fucking car, now! <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> and put some clothes on. 
You know, when you broke down, you ever broke down and been towed by somebody? Fuck, they don't like you overtaking, do they? <laughs> you come out on the outside like a water skier, like that. <laughs> Watch them shit their pants. <laughs> but I think the worst one of all, and I swear, I swear this, is bump starting the car with your wife when you've broken down. Because I, I know women can push. Because I've fucking seen you with push chairs and trolleys and stuff like that. So, so when we've broken down and we asked you, why do you go to the back of the car and go like that? I can't. <laughs> My shoes are slight pain. <laughs> Have I got my shoes on? <laughs> All right, then you steer off, <laughs> fucking push. <laughs> you know, and you go to the back of the car and you push, you go like that, you go, <laughs> You still got the fucking air brake on! <laughs> well, you left it like that. Anyway, I thought it was an air freshener. No, because when I take it off, the smell of burning goes away. Just drive the fucking car up. <laughs> but don't get involved with your wife in cars. For instance, in our house, we haven't got a kitchen. And my wife was insistent she wanted an Ikea kitchen, you know? And you know what men are like? They only want to get the kitchen on the one fucking day. You go, OK, today's kitchen day. Let's go and get your fucking kitchen. So we did. I got the trolley, we're going round Ikea. My wife's next to me going, I want my hob, I want my hob. It's your fucking hob. <laughs> what is it with women in hobs, you know? When I use them, they criticise me. They do that kind of tutting, kind of... <laughs> I don't get on with machines, you know, like computers. They only tell us when we're doing stuff wrong, never when we're doing anything right. It always comes up on the screen. Wrong, wrong again. Go back to pen and paper, you twat, your shit. It's always the same, you know? <laughs> It's like Venetian blinds. Have you had to go on one of those? You pull one string, it's like, no, pull the other one, fuck off. Never in a million years, you monkey boy. <laughs> we got it all. We got the full kitchen. We got all the units. We got everything. We got the false drawer that goes under the sink. That ain't really a fucking drawer. <laughs> they even put that little handle on it, you know, just to fool you. Oh, it's a joke fucking drawer. We got it all, sink, units, everything. We're on our way out the door. My wife goes, do you think it'd fit in the car? It'd fit in the fucking car. We got outside, we got a full kitchen. We got to get it into a Ford Fiesta. <laughs> I'm like this with my wife, pick the thing up. That's it, no, no, to me, to me, to me, to me. Massive fight, don't you, madam. <laughs> Have a look at Ikea car park. It's just full of couples fighting. Oh, see you at home, you fucking cow. It's like a mass Mooney divorce. People are trying to get stuff in their car. You see people going across the car park with flat packs. Have you seen them? They look like fucking Angel of the North. They're like, ah. <laughs> and I'm a man. Now it's a pride thing. This is going in that car. So determined am I, I'm breaking bits. <laughs> I've got flat packs up against the wall going, see this, love? See this here, right? This <laughs> is going in that fucking car. You ever tried to break that bit of wood and it don't break? You kind of go like, see this? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> that, that one there, right? That going as it is, that one. Because <laughs> it's strange. We always blame the inanimate object for our own mistake, you know? It's like you kick the coffee table at home and you blame the coffee table. You go like, ah, oh, you fuck it. <laughs> the coffee table's led the gun. What the We drive all the way home in first gear because I can't reach the fucking gears. Doesn't look like a car anymore, looks like a skip, you know? 
Wood just sticking out the window. Have you ever done that? Coming home from the DIY store? Wood sticking out your fucking window. You would take somebody's head off with that. <laughs> what happened here then? I don't know, officer. It was like a drive-by jousting. <laughs> he, like... <laughs> he took his head fucking clean off. I'm driving, I wonder why motorbikes are going by with no fucking riders on. I'm... <laughs> Just the gloves, you know? <laughs> Mad. The irony of it is, is we still don't have a kitchen in, you know? We don't. My wife wanted to get in builders, you know, and I'm, I don't know. I'm really good with builders, I really fucking shout at them, but via my wife, all blokes do. You go like, ah, tell them builders today, right? Tell them, love, they're shit. <laughs> you make sure you tell them, I can't, I've got to make myself scarce while you tell them. <laughs> and you know it gets to that point when your wife goes, I'm not telling them anymore, you're going to have to tell them. You go to the builder and you go, has she been shouting at you? Yeah, she's a bit nuts. Everything is how you're feeling with ladies. You know, they ring up and go, how you feeling? How you me feeling? You feel... Men, we can't do that. We're not allowed to show our feelings. We can't ring up our mate and go, John, I just wondered, how you feeling? <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Easy, fella. <laughs> We're not allowed. Women in phones, though, my wife, fuck, don't get me started. Our phone will ring at three in the morning, my wife will look at it and go, who's that calling it this time? <laughs> I don't fucking know! <laughs> if I knew that, we wouldn't need the bloody phone. <laughs> you know, it's like phones. You ever called the wrong number? They're always in, aren't they? <laughs> you got the wrong number. That's what they always say. You got. Why have we always got the wrong number? You might have the wrong fucking house. <laughs> huh? It's like email. Email is meant to be a faster way of communicating. What happens when somebody sends you email? They ring you up. I'm sending you email. <laughs> ring me back when you read it. And that's my wife, who I love with my whole soul. I, I love her so much. I loved her the first day I met her, and I love her so much now, even more, probably. And I have a daughter as well, Molly. She, uh, she's eight. She hit me in the bollocks the other day. Wow. <laughs> she's a woman. I'm trying to teach her to fight. I went, come on. She went like that. Boom, off. Because <laughs> they don't know, you know. Men, we're meant to check our balls for lumps. It says it in men's magazines. It says, check, like, we have to be told. I use it as a fucking excuse, do you? <laughs> what are you doing? I, uh, checking for lumps, love. <laughs> Whilst watching the porno Chanel. <laughs> kids, are, it's an amazing thing when you have children. People always ask the same question. When you have kids, what did it weigh? What does it matter? We're not having it for fucking Christmas. Why do they ask that? <laughs> You know, who cares? I think what it is, it's, a, it's like a pain thing for ladies, you know? If you say, oh, four pound, four pound, I would just pop down. <laughs> if you say ten, 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 oh, fucking bangsy. <laughs> no, because I love that one. Are you having any more? Like, it's an easy thing to do. Yeah, well, they're still stitching my ass up. But we are seriously thinking about it. <laughs> Trying to teach my daughter about animals, like not to kill them, first of all. I killed a fly in our house the other day. I wish I hadn't. They make you feel so guilty. It's like you spray them with that fly spray. Fuck, it's like they've been to acting school or something, you know? You go, they go around your house for like an hour going, oh, oh. <laughs> They're knocking stuff off the mantelpiece. <laughs> what have you done to me? You know, you try and hit them with a the magazine and they always get away at the last split second. What you should do is get something more interesting to read. You go like that and they go, oh, look at the... <laughs> so we've got a dog as well, Rex. 
fucking useless. He just shags your leg. He don't, not only does he shag your leg, but he's looking at the other one going, when I've done you, I'm gonna do you. <laughs> what is that? It doesn't even resemble a dog. What does he go to his mates afterwards and go, see them two, shag them. If you haven't got a dog, don't get one. And if you've got one, you know what I mean. They make you paranoid. They do stuff within your household to justify their own existence. Like it'd be three in the morning, be asleep on the mat and suddenly you wake up and go, burglars outside with knives and guns and everything, I think. Where, what can you hear, Rex? Nothing. <laughs> it goes back to doing that dog sleep, physical Tourette's twitching shit. <laughs> My wife's like that. Oh, look, he's dreaming. What's he dreaming about? He's done fuck all all day! <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, that's my family. That's my wife and my daughter. And that's where we've been. That's what we've been up to. And, uh, and then we got to Wembley Arena. Thank you very much indeed. Good night. And God bless you all. Thank you.